oil pump is very easy to reinstall. It just has to have oil, of course, on its gear drive. And you put it in place and it has one nut and one lock washer. As I was saying before, this needs to be in before you safety wire this area. So be sure to get the oil pump in before you safety wire. Now we're going to rotate the engine again. And this time we're going to rotate it up and we're going to look towards the front of the engine and see what all we have to do there. Up front, you have your front motor mount plate and you have a gasket here. This gasket needs to be installed with Aviation Permatex. You put it on the front and the back. You don't need a lot of it, just a little bit. You notice I haven't put any up here on this portion of it. This we're not going to do yet. We're going to do this at a later point, but the part below it, which is against the block and between this front motor mount, needs to have Aviation Permatex on both sides. Then you put your motor mount on and fasten your motor mount down only with probably a couple of nuts to begin with. So don't think you're going to do the whole thing and we'll show you up front which nuts and bolts to use for now. At the front of the engine, the way to time it correctly, this being your cam gear, this being your crankshaft gear. Notice the crankshaft gear has the actual keyway for woodruff keys pointing straight up. So you see those woodruff key openings, and it's pointing straight up. The camshaft gear has a dot at about a 45 roughly looking angle, and that's in line obviously with a hole over here. When these two are in these positions, we have a dot here, and we have our other dot right here on our crankshaft gear. Always remember, this must be up, and this should be lined up like I've put the screwdriver across here. This will give you, between the two dots, and notice it actually says nine links right here. It says nine links. So we're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine links between the two dots. The other thing the book will tell you is it's ten pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's how you know you're timed correctly. Now the two gears here to install them, because the timing chain has a center piece in it that locks into the center of each gear, you have to assemble both gears at the same time with the timing chain on there. So that's a little futzy, but if you've done everything right, this is what it's going to look like when you put it on. The only one we've tied down permanently so far is the camshaft gear, which has a little special lock that you put in with a tab and you fold up, and the nut. So that has been assembled permanently. We've yet to add the additional items up front at this point on the engine here. Here we have a brass tube and this tube is a replacement for the original. The original was steel. Steel ones rust away. What it really is, is a tube that runs from the front to the back of the engine. It has a series of holes to provide water jets to the exhaust valves. It's very vital. You have to get the old one out, which the only way I can tell you is it's by the by guess and by gosh method and a lot of long bits and wires and pulling and it's a mess to get out. But you must replace this tube. If you're in the Graham Club, you can find in one of the old issues the exact dimensions of everything to make the tube up correctly. And that's not really the point of the video here, it's just to tell you the tube must be replaced. This particular bolt that has a slot in it, that's a very special bolt because it has an end that has no threads on it that holds this tube in place from rotation. So you got to have the right bolt here for sure. And when you put this bolt in, again, you need to use Permatex number two, otherwise it's going to leak liquid out the side of the engine. So Permatex number two and a lock washer when you install it. Right here you have the little camshaft guard and oil slinger piece. There are three fasteners on it. That's all you need to fasten 
your front motor mount for the time being. It's just those three fasteners and that little guard. This is your oil pressure regulator. Things to know here. Your oil pressure is theoretically set, but we don't know how old your spring will be. You can add washers between this cap and the spring and the plunger if you need to. You're not going to know that till you run it. The biggest thing you're going to do right now though is put a new copper washer directly behind this piece because that's your seal mechanism here is a copper washer. Do not reuse a copper washer, get a new one. When installing head studs on these engines, you're actually putting the stud into the water jacket. You're going to put the coarse side of the stud in and you're going to use Permatex number two, or as I said, another brand equivalent of this particular sealant. You want to go all the way around the base of the threads, screw your stud in part way, at least get it started here. And you're going to need a stud installer. I'll set down the Permatex and we'll just go around and we'll install our stud. Be sure you go all the way down and get it tight. And there that stud's installed. The only other thing you want to do is clean up the excess that it's actually come out around the threads. Depending on the wear on the threads and how much you put on, you may or may not get much. A paper towel will take it off. What we're looking at here is the valves on the side of the engine. This particular engine had two spots we put in new valve seats. The other 10 are based on the original engine and have been uh, remachined with a valve job. However, because it's gone down, we got a little valve recession. We're using 60 thousandths shim washers on the 10 that do not have new seats. So that makes us a little harder than normal. We're going to take our spring, our shim washer for the spring, and our little hat, and we're going to set them up in here. And as I said, this is going to be a little difficult. Get them all together. And in this case, I have an old Model T valve spring compressor. I've got to get this under here just right to do it. And so far I'm not succeeding. I thought it was going to go in, but it's not. Oh, there it did. There it is. That's the hard part of the job. Now we finally got this complicated little piece in here. It just makes it really hard with that washer in there. Not that it's simple, otherwise that makes it really hard. So it's in place. Next, what we have to do is we have to add our valve. And it's the only valve I've left out, so you can see how we do this. So we'll get the valve and show you what we do. Here we have the remaining valve for this particular engine. And we have a can full of our assembly lube. And we're going to put a bunch of assembly lube around the valve here. And then we're going to slide it in and turn it around and work it up and down a little bit to put that lube in place in the valve guide. Here we have the valve. We're going to set it up in the valve guide. Move it up and down, slide around a bit. That's just to spread and distribute the oil. Now we will try and find out where our hole is. It has a little hole in the bottom. Try to have the hole pointing out. Might move when we put the actual valve spring compressor on here. Hopefully it won't. All right, here I have a homemade valve spring compressor. And we'll give you the dimensions on this in a minute because I made it to fit the engine and it works really well. What's been done here is we have a plate at the bottom where we've cut out to have room for putting it around the valve assembly. And we have the sides bent up here, so it has strength. Then we have a half inch 
square rod that we bent and welded down here at the bottom. We have a 5 16 fine thread, all thread piece here that we've made. We have a removable brass little cap that this can run in that we've got oil in. I put knurling on that just so I can hold on to it easier. We have a handle at the top that's threaded on there as well as two nuts threaded and jammed. And that's our handle and that's made out of 5 eighths square steel stock. This is all stuff I had lying around that I made this for. In a moment we'll give you the dimensions on a little sketch in case you want to make one of these. But here's how to use it. First of all, you got to get the right amount of length. And since I've actually put another valve in, I'm going to have to get myself a little more room by screwing it back. And we'll put it up here and see if we got enough room. And almost enough room, just a little bit more. Because what you want to do is you want to get your little brass piece right there, basically in the center of your valve down below your underneath your spring assembly and then you just start twisting down and what's going to happen here is it's going to start to lift on our spring assembly bit by bit and bring it up. It's always easier to do the exhaust valves than the intakes because the exhaust valves tend to have a little spot in the center of them where that brass piece stays. The intake valves are sort of curved by comparison. They're actually a little harder to work with. You kind of got to hold it in place. The little snapping noises mean that we're actually getting the spring to go by a couple of the items down here. And that's what we're doing as we bring the spring assembly up. And it takes a while using a fine thread, but it works real good. So now we're going to bring this up bit by bit by screwing down, which will jack up our spring assembly. And we just got to keep it in there. And you can see the spring assembly is jacking up here. A little at a time. Fine thread will make it take a while, but it makes this work really well. But this is so much easier than using any other spring compressor that I had. And I made one up that actually works for it.